Hi everyone, in today's video, we'll take a look at how we can display the color meta field from our primary taxonomy term in an elemental loop grid. We'll also go further to display multiple terms with unique colors in the elemental loop grid, all using Jet Engine. If that subject interests you, stick around and we'll jump right into it. So here we are on the WordPress dashboard. First, let's go to our jet engine post types. I have created the post type called resources. And in there, I've just added some meta fields. Then I've also gone ahead to create a taxonomy. So I'll go to the jet engine taxonomy and see resource types. That's the name of the taxonomy. It was linked to the resources post type. And I've added the meta field. The main one here is the label BG color. That is going to be used as the background color within our loop grid. So now that we have that, let me go ahead and actually open the resources. So I'll go to my all resources. And you see I've created four resources. And see there's dynamic shortcodes. If you open that, I've just added some description. So meta fields, but the main thing here is that I've added the resource type, design, and dynamic content. I've done that for all the other ones. So those are all of the different resources. Then if you go to the resource types, so each of these resource types, I've given them some color. This is the main thing we're working with here, which is now called label underscore bg underscore color. Let me just go ahead and copy that. So that's the key that we need later. So I'm just giving them different light colors. So when we are equipped with all of these, the next thing we need to do now is go ahead and apply the loop grid in our page. So I'll just go ahead and create a new page. So create a page. And the page, I'll just call it something like maybe resource test. I'll publish that. Publish. Then I'll go ahead and edit the Elementor. So in here, let me just go ahead and drop the loop grid. Then I'll create a new template. Save that. The first thing I like doing is making sure I make them organized. So I first go to the settings, give it a name. So maybe I'll say resource listing demo template then make sure the preview is the right post type which is the resources apply and preview okay now that i know that that is all set up we can now continue so first let me just drop some random widgets or drop in maybe the heading widget then I'll drop in an image widget, followed by a text editor widget, and maybe a button. Okay, so now that we have these, let me start adding in the dynamic content. So for the heading widget, usually it'll be like maybe a H3. Then I'll give it the dynamic tag. And I'll put the post title, which should be this one. Okay. Next is the image. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Then I'll just put the dynamic tags and I'll look for the featured image. Or oh, in this case, I didn't actually use a featured image. So let me choose the actual image, which is a, a jet engine image. So I'll say jet engine and the custom image. Then I'll choose the right one I want, which is called display name. Okay. So let me now publish that. Next one is the dynamic tag and I want the excerpt. Click on the wrench icon. I'll say just generate from or apply from the post content. 
and let me just give it like 25 okay so publish this then let me save and back to make sure everything's applied choose the right query so i click on the loop grid come under query and choose the right source the source should be resources so now everything is being pulled in correctly i'll save this then go back and edit it okay so edit this then let me just give it a background color for this one i created some colors for the actual post let me go ahead and show you so i'll press ctrl k from here this is because i'm using command ui that's why i have this search so i want to go ahead and search for the jet post types Control enter to open a new tab Control 2 to go to that tab and you have the resources and you can see i put them as a media called display name that's why it is display dash name that's what i'm using so let me now go ahead and add something else which if you go back you see i also added listing bg color let me just go ahead and show you where an example so the wp code box this is the color but this is for the post not for the taxonomy term so now for the post let me just give that a background color so under background classic choose the color choose the dynamic tag then i'll choose the jet engine custom field field will be that background color for the resources so that is listing background color and we have that let me go ahead and give it some styling so i'll put some padding let's see 20 pixels okay i think that should be good enough then i'll come under the custom css and use a little bit of css to make it have even shape so i'll say selector img aspect ratio 16 by 9 just to give them an even aspect ratio then say width 100 percent height 100 percent object fit should be contained in this case because i just want them to have a background color but the actual item should still remain with all of the elements visible so with this i can now save it and go back and you see it is all working but this is colors directly from the post now i want to apply colors from the taxonomy term so let me go back in just do some extra styling so this one i want it to go to the top so order to the top so that every other thing can go beneath then let me just show you the term so generally with elementor you already have this item called post info widget let me go ahead and drop that in just to show you that we can get the terms using elementor directly but it's not as good as when you're using jet engine so i can choose the terms then i'll choose the taxonomy which in this case is resource types i don't want it to be linked and you see we can actually get our term but this is only really useful when we want to get the term name if we want to get the term meta field which in this case is the background color then this method is not effective but thankfully we have jet engine which gives us so much power that we don't really need to write any line of code and we'll be able to get what we want so now let's go ahead and check it out to get the background color is actually very simple first let me drop a dynamic terms widget from jet engine then i'll go ahead and choose the taxonomy from resource types and this is another way we get something different from elemental with elemental 
the post info widget, it will just list out all of the terms. With Jet Engine, you have the added advantage that you can just show only one term at a time. So now I can say, show all terms, no, I only want the first term. And now we get only the first term and I can decide that I don't want it to be linked as well. Now let me show you what is the difference. So publish it, go to the front end and you see here with Elementor, you have all of them listed out with a comma separation, but with Jet Engine, you can decide I just only want the first term to show up. And that's what I want in this case. I only want the first term and I only want the color from the first term. So we've gotten the first term. Now let's see how we can get the color from the first term. So rather than using this widget, I can use any widget I like. So let me use the heading widget, like was in the example. Then I'll come to advanced tab, then go under background and the background type classic, background color. I'll choose the dynamic tag. Then here we choose the term field. The taxonomy, you choose what taxonomy it is, which is the resource types. And the field is a meta field. And the name was label underscore BG underscore color. So let me go ahead and save this. And we'll check it out the front end, refresh. And you see, we get the colors from each of these terms. Now, let me even go ahead and show you all of these colors on the back end. So I'll go to my resource types and control enter, control three. And for like code snippets, you see the color is green. If we go back, you see the color was green. If we go to the other one, let's go back. And for that one, it was dynamic content. So dynamic content, see the color. The third one was page builder let's go back to page builder and you see the colors so that's how we can easily pull out the color from the primary term that's the important bit here it will only get the color from the first term but what if we want to do like we showed in our second example let me go back to my pages and i believe i called it resources 2 so in that case, you see, we have each of them, we're having different colors for the term items. So how can we do this? In this case, we need to do what we call nested listing. And thankfully with Jet Engine, we can easily do nested listing. So all we have to do is create a listing grid and then apply it into our Elementor loop grid. So to do that, we'll take it in a couple of steps. First, we'll create a query, then we'll create a listing, and then we'll apply that listing into the Elementor loop grid. So first, let's start by creating the query using the query builder. So I'll go to my query builder. I've already created the query, so let me just go ahead and show you what the query is. So you just go ahead and do create new. So say category to loop, you give it a name, you select the query type to be terms query. And the other important thing here is choose the taxonomy to be the resource types or whatever taxonomy you are using. And finally, this is very important. You set the object or post IDs to current ID. So let me delete it and show you. You click on this dynamic stack symbol and you choose the first one, which is current ID. That basically would take the ID from the loop grid and then apply it as the post title for the term. So it will get the terms for that specific post title. Okay, then we can go ahead and do the other things like if you want to order it by the term name and you just update the query. So that's how you create the query. The next thing you need to do is create your listing grid. And for me personally, because it's just going to be listing terms, I chose to use the twig and timber because that gives you the least amount of like code. If you are using Elementor, you can go ahead and use Elementor or Gutenberg or whatever one you're using. But I prefer to use the twig or timber listing. 
And to get that, you go under Jet Engine, then under Performance. Make sure you do Optimize DOM, set that to Active. Then you come under Timber slash Twig, you set that to Active. Then it will ask you if you want to install it. So you go ahead and install the version 1 or version 2. I chose to install the version 2. Then you say Save Twigs Config. Once you've done that, you've now activated Timber and Twig. The next thing we need to do is now create our listing. So you come under Listing slash Components. Then you create your listing. So go ahead and create a new listing. In this case, I've already created a listing. So let me just go ahead and show you. Edit it. And what I just simply did was I just wrote span. Within that span, I came under the dynamic tag and I chose dynamic data. The source is the post slash term, but then the object field is not title, it will now be the term name. That's the important thing here. Then you can go ahead and insert it and you to insert the term name. Next, I decided to add some style because I wanted to put this background color. What I did was just inside this listing grid, just came ahead and said class equal to, I gave it a class name, then I gave it a CSS variable equal to this dynamic tag because I wanted to use that in the style here, but that's not important. You can do everything in your Elementor template. If you prefer to use Elementor, then you can just go ahead and choose the term, the term color, and then everything will be done visually. But if you want to do it with the timber or twig listing, then this is the easiest way to do it. So all I have to do is now give it a class name of this. Then I went ahead to do style equal to, then I just choose a variable name. You can just choose any name, like maybe DD, DG, CLR. Okay, then column. Then I went to the dynamic tag again, choose dynamic data. And then I, this time I choose that it is not the object data, but I want it to come from a metadata. The meta field is now our label color from the term. So that is the label BG color. And that's it. So insert. And yeah, that's it. So now it's the DD-BG-color. So I can come here and simply change this to DD-BG-CLR. Can go ahead and delete the top, save it, and reload preview. And see, we still get the same thing. So that's how I built it. So now that we have built this listing, all you have to do is go back to your template. So that's the template here. And this time, rather than using the dynamic terms or the post info widget, We'll go ahead and drop in a listing grid widget. So listing grid. Then I will go ahead and choose my listing. So the listing name was called resource type list sub list. So now we get it. It is the code snippets. And we get all of these and that's it. So we can choose if you want only one column, if you want two columns, let's go ahead and just publish it and see if everything works. So I'll preview on the front end and close all of these. Close. And you can see, we get the title, we get the color. And for this one, we have the two items. The last thing we need to do now is actually add some styling because the way Jet Engine does it is using some kind of CSS that gives it full width. So if you put two columns, it will only be two columns. What if we want it so that it will only take up its own width, not the full width? 
then that is quite simple. Let me go ahead and show you how you do it. The thing we need here is, let me inspect it. You just need to come and pick this class name. This is the important name here. Jet-listing-grid underscore underscore item. Let me go ahead and copy that. Then I'll go back to this listing under the advanced custom CSS. I'll go ahead and say maybe selector dot that class name that we copied. We'll do some things with this. We'll also do some things with the parent container. So I'll say selector dot items. That's the parent container. So for the parent, what you need to do is say the padding should be zero, margin should be zero, then the width should be 100%. For the each of the individual items, you say the width should be fit content, then we'll also say flex should be zero, one, or two. Those are the two important bits here. And that's it. Save it. And let's see if it works. We may need to remove some padding as well. Yeah, we need to remove the padding and margin as well. So padding, zero. Margin, zero. If we want to add some gap, we can actually use a gap property. So say gap, maybe 1M. That is the gap between two items. So if you publish this, should work now. Let's go to the front end, close this. And you see our two items side by side and the gap is the 1M. Maybe I should reduce it a little bit and say something like 0.5M. Then publish and go ahead and see it. And you see we just have 0.5 spacing between the two of them. And yeah, that's how we can get our listing items into our loop grid. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do leave a thumbs up. Then write in the comments. Let me know what other kind of videos you'd like me to cover about Jet Engine or maybe any other topic in general. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.